14. Let us hear the good news in Jesus Christ. And Jesus returned. This is after his temptation in the wilderness. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him throughout all the region around about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. Then he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Elias. It is for us Isaiah. And when he op had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book. And he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Let us pray. Lord, speak unto us your truth by your word. And our reflecting upon it might be to your glory. That your truth might be revealed in what we say and what we do. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength, our redeemer. So in Christ we pray. Amen. In the traditions of the church, and some of us have had different experiences. We haven't all grown up and spent all of our time here, there are different ways of behaving around the actual physical word of God. In the life and the tradition of the church, there are in some congregations one who's given a, an interesting responsibility. The beetle. The church beetle. Now that sounds like a very Anglican word, doesn't it, Ian? But it has strong roots in the, in the Presbyterian church in certain Presbyterian churches as well. You will have in these congregations someone who carries the Bible in. Has that ever been an experience here? Carries the Bible in and either lays it down on the communion table or brings it up to the pulpit and lays it down for the minister. And that in itself speaks to different theologies within the life of the church. Where do you want to openly display this Bible? If the Bible is brought down and laid, especially if it's laid on the communion table, whether on a stand or just laid on the table itself, and opened, and it must be opened, if that takes place, then it is a, an announcement to the congregation of this is your word, this is given to you, and it is an important, important statement for the church that was responding to a tradition where God's people couldn't read the word for themselves, where it had to be read for them by priests, and its explanation given, if at all, given to the congregation through the priesthood. This is something that in the Reformation, many denominations rebelled against, protested against. The other, where the scripture is brought up and walked down on the pulpit, usually with some bit of a performance to it, and long bookmarks are flopped out, given that are all marking the day's readings. That is the congregation saying to the minister, this is our word, we're putting it in your hands, you better say something about it and tell us what it means. And so the office of the beetle is, is a powerful and important office in those churches. I try to make it a point that Whatever congregation I serve, there should be a Bible open at all times in the facility. So here it is. Sometimes I, I actually read from the text. It's on these pages and not just from my, my notes. There will come a time, I think, in the life of our church where we'll have this word projected somewhere up. So you can all see it. 
But for now, we have it in the pews. We can open it for ourselves. But it has to be evident in the life of the church community. God's word. Sometimes I've had the uncomfortable experience of attending a worship service to hear the weekly, the weekly report of the minister who gets up in the pulpit around the preaching time and tells you about all the things that went on during the week. And I don't hear God's word. I, I mean, good things were done. Nice things were done. And that's good. <clears throat> but there's no illustration of Scripture there's no attempt to connect it to the experience of the community. And I wonder if in all of that, can't call it preaching, in that reporting, there is any listening that goes on. The people that are gathered there know what the minister did all week. The minister's talking about being around all those people. But how it relates to God's word is lost. God's people knew their history. They knew what they had been through when they came to that moment by the water gate with Nehemiah and Ezra. There is those fun names. Now, when it comes to reading scripture, you want to know if you're on my good side or my bad side? If I get you to read a passage like I read from Nehemiah today, you know that we have some things to resolve. But I like in scripture that we have these funny names that are hard to say, these long lists of, of names, because it gives us an idea. There were people there, their presence was recognized and celebrated when the word of God was shared. In some churches, every Sunday there's attendance taken. In others, we get a general idea. But imagine if there was a roll called off as you came in the door. Who was there? Write down their name. Make a record of it and, and, and celebrate it each week. That's the sort of encounter we have in Nehemiah. Where those that were present, who was where they were sitting? Who was on the right hand? Who was on the left? Kind of lopsided today. In this passage in Nehemiah, what is most recognizable is that they were really eager to gather around the law of Moses. See, what happened in the exile when God's people were, were taken out of Israel and into captivity, this was all taken away from them. They lost contact with God's word. They were celebrating finally having it back, being able to gather and to, to have their faith, to share it to talk about it, to have it spoken to them, to have it preached to them. There's a great definition of what ministry is, what preaching, what I do up here in, in Nehemiah. So they read the book of God's law distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. There's, there's preaching in a nutshell. The only thing you could add to that is to encounter the presence of God in this. But that's the New Testament reading. We'll come to that in a moment. What Nehemiah does for the people of God, he is the interpreter, the giver of the word. Ezra, the chief priest, saw to the ordinance, saw to how the service went, that there was worship going on. It wasn't just a speech that was being given, but in the midst of, of the praise, there was a chance to have some words spoken to explain God's word, to remind people of its importance and to draw them back to the core truths that had seen God's people through their exile and back home again. And so in, in coming back home to God's word, Nehemiah offers God's people a reason for praise. Lori, I'm gonna draw something out of our shared experience in the last couple of days. I think you'll enjoy this. When I conduct a funeral, and sadly, in the course of our life together as a congregation, you will be 
the families that sometimes receive that care. I spend some time with the family before, either the night before or just before the service, where I give them some instruction. And already I've been told that I'm going to become well known for this because of something I say in the course of that, which is when I'm speaking before the congregation, and when I, especially when I come to the sermon, if I'm going too fast, just put your hand up like this so that I'll know to slow down because I don't want to overwhelm. And it's a very overwhelming time. I said, but if you put your hand up like this, I know you're praising God and you're being a good Pentecostal. And I'm not sure if the other Presbyterians in the room can handle that. Anyway, we did have a good laugh about that in the last couple of days. And I think word's already gotten back across the river, so I might get in here for a while. <laughs> but the truth of it is, if we look to Nehemiah, and the way that God's people responded there, we all should be like this. Because that is the way, at least the scripture tells us, we are meant to respond to God's word. Not, not just with, with smiles and with understanding and, and, and with joy on our faces, but over to the point of nearly being overwhelmed by it. With arms raised. With praise that is evident. No one's going to miss that you're doing this. That's how God's people responded. They had been generations without God's word. They might have taken the Psalms with them into exile, but God's word was left buried, maybe lost forever. Yet when they were, were, were free to go back to the promised land, there it was, and it was opened before them, and here it was being share, shared by those who were leading them. And, and the wonderful thing about that leadership was, in doing this, they said, it's not really us leading you, it's God who's leading you again. And God's people had a sense of that. Then we come to Jesus, who takes the words of the prophets, the prophet Isaiah. And that's an important word that comes out of that exile too, because those words of the prophets, they didn't go into the exile. They came out of the exile with those words. These were the words of encouragement and promise that God's people drew out of exile. And Jesus takes that word and say, and this is where it was all going, and it's going to me. Jesus says, this word that you've been waiting for, this word that started with, with Moses and with those first five books of the law that is evident through all the words of praise that you have and the words of promise in the prophets, in me they are fulfilled. He's the only preacher that can get away with saying that. These words are not fulfilled in me. They're not fulfilled in us, but in Christ they are fulfilled. And if we are in him, then we can share in that fulfillment, in those promises, and all of this coming true to the glory of God. And in that glory, we are upraised to be a, a celebrated child of this word, an heir of the kingdom that is described in God's word. Not just observers of it, not just foreigners or immigrants to it, but children of it, God's own family, called back through this word, a declaration that has gone out from the beginning of time to times that generations are beyond our sight, we'll see. And what have we to do? As Nehemiah did as it was Christ's own tradition to do, as he handed down to apostles and to prophets and those who would fulfill the many offices of the church to preach. To preach the word. Not just from the pulpit, but from all of our hearts. Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord, we thank you for the gift of your word that causes us to be uplifted in who we are and who we recognize ourselves to be and Lord calls us to account and who we're not. And we are ashamed that we have never been. Lord, we are humbled before your word and even as we bring you praise this day, we ask your spirit's presence to go with us to, that we might continue to listen 
that we in our time of devotion will be directed, offered healing, and be empowered to offer healing, even your miracles unto others. Lord, we pray this day in thanks for those who have come to minister to us in our lives. Those we've agreed with, those we've disagreed with. Those who called us to stand up for our faith and those who gave us faith to stand upon. Lord, we pray for those who have gone out from their homes out into the world in ministry and in missions. Especially those that are far from home. We pray for, for their experience that they might be able to share it with home. That they might bring the strength of their homes out into those far-flung places in the world. Lord, we thank you for places of mission that are now starting to call back to us. Who are sending missionaries into our midst. Because Lord, we have a rich field with many people who do not know your word, but Lord, are hungry to hear it. Lord, help us to know the words to say to the friends who we think might mock us. Lord, help us to have the, the truth to reveal in, in just the way we live our lives, that people might ask, why do you do that? We might be able to say, because I love the Lord. Lord, we pray in thanks for all that we have to live the lives that we do. Lord, we thank you for the, the, the convenience. Help us not to take it for granted, to misuse it. But to take our freedom and time and offer it to those who feel that they have none. Let us be generous with the generosity we have been shown. Help us to instill a sense of the reward of hard work, of the discipline that leads to a, a sense of fulfillment in life. Lord, all these things that empower us and strengthen us are not for us alone. So Lord, help us to be good teachers. Lord, we pray and thanks for those who provide for us, who go out into the fields in their seasons, who work on farms, who work in the food industry, that our basic needs might be provided for. We thank you, Lord, for those with gifts of healing who bring healing into our lives, that we might be a source of healing for others in our own way. Lord, we pray and thanks for those who give of their own safety, their own health and well-being, who will even lay down their life, though they are strangers to us, for our safety and our security. Lord, even as we live in a land of peace, we know that there are homes which are not peaceful. We pray for families that are fragmented. We pray for those that are causing the fragmentation. The reasons and the troubles that so many families face this day. Poverty and addictions. Even differences of opinion. Lord, you give us all a point of view. Help us to share it lovingly. Offer it as a way of building up the body that is in Christ. That these differences might be celebrated and used in the way that your spirit directs us. Lord, take us away from paths of unrighteousness unto the way that is truth and everlasting salvation before you that is in Christ in whose name we pray this day and always.